Dr. Tapp, will you state your name for the record? Dr. Edward Tapp. And what is your occupation? I am a physician specializing in pathology. And how long have you been a physician specializing in pathology? Ten years. Ten years. And how are you currently employed? I am currently employed at uh, the County Medical Examiner Office. I can perform autopsies okay, fine. <laughs> to determine the cause of death. And Over the past two years, I've yeah. performed approximately 500 plus autopsies. What level of education did you receive to obtain your employment? I uh, attended the University of Florida, and I got a BS in chemistry, and then I got my doctorate at Florida with oil well university. What is your training and experience in this profession? I um, did an internship at the Cook County Hospital in Chicago. I was a residency in pathology at Loyola University Hospital. Do you have any professional licenses that aid you in performing your job? I do. I have my license in Illinois, and I'm board certified with the American College of Pathology. And Dr. Tab, do you maintain membership in any professional associations that aid in your continuing education in this field? I am a member of the American Medical Association, also the American College of Pathology, and the American Association of Forensic Pathologists. Have you authored any publications in this field? I have. Uh, I on the food. <laughs> and I that was published in the Journal of American Medical Association. And you mentioned this previously, but I just want to touch on it one more time. If you could. Um, sort of ballpark how many autopsies you think you've performed throughout your career? Approximately 500 over the past uh, two years. And I testify regularly in homicide cases on causes of death, and I've done so in over 25 cases to date. So it's fair to say you're pretty well versed in testifying in these types of trials? Yes. Your Honor, now the state would move to qualify Mr. Tapp as an expert witness. Okay, now it'll go to your testimony. Dr. Tapp, were you employed at the County Medical Examiner's Office on August 5th of this year? Yes. And did you have the task of examining the body of an Alma Bradshaw on that date? I did. And upon receiving the body, receiving and examining the body, what was your professional opinion about how the victim died? In my professional opinion, the immediate cause of death was edema of the brain uh, due to multiple internal injuries. And what were your observations when you examined the exterior of your body that led you to that conclusion? Um, fatty liver. Oh, uh, the body was that of a well-developed, undernourished female who measured um, about 5'2 and weighed about 80 pounds. The scalp is covered with black hair. In the left lateral forehead over the posterior third, of the left eyebrow, there is an oblique, oblique laceration measuring two centimeters. The laceration is two centimeters in depth and toward the neurosis covering the inferior border of the left roof of the brain. Below the inferior border of this laceration, there is a pale brown abrasion measuring about one centimeter. There is echomyosis of the sclera and conjunctive of the right eye. There are two linear abrasions of the inferior aspect of the right side of the face. And that was the completion of your external exam? Yes. And would that be consistent with a, your finding that the victim died as a result of laceration? Yes. In regards to your internal examination, what did you find relating to the victim's head? Um, the scalp was reflected... And the soft tissue covering the inferior portion of the right occipital region showed minimal hemorrhage and a patch measuring three centimeters. There, there is minimal hemorrhage of the inferior third of the latter, latero anterior aspect of the right forehead. There is also superior orbital. There is also minimal hemorrhage of the soft tissue covering the left superior orbital bridge. There are about a few cc of bright clotted. Blood in the subdural space of the left occipital lobe, which is associated with contusion of 0.4 centimeters in length. Um, 
dark red of the inferior medial surface of the left occipital lobe. There were no fractures of the skull. The brain was edema. There, the vessels of the surface of the brain were engorged. The brain weighed 1,085 grams. There was diffuse congestion of the inner area of the cerebral cortex. Um, Pedicyl hemorrhages were seen in the white matter. The ventricle ventricular system contained clear fluid. There were no contusions or lacerations of the spinal cord or intervertebrate um, discs of the cervical vertebral column. Mm -hmm. Ver In regards to your internal examination, what did you find relating to the victim's body? The body was opened with a Y incision to reveal the subcutaneous tissue in the midline to measure two centimeters. The left lung was missing and replaced by dense fibrous adhesions. There were old sutures in the left hiller region. The right lung was attached to the chest wall by multiple fibrous adhesions. The amount of the blood in the body was reduced. There was scoliosis of the dorsal vertebrae column with, with the concavity pointing toward the left. The left leaf, the diaphragm, was at the left sixth intercoast, intercoastal space, while the right leaf was at the twelfth intercoastal space. Both were in the posterior portion. The internal genitalia were unremarkable. And did you reach an anatomical diagnosis as a result of your internal and external exams? Yes. And what were those results? She had edema of the brain. She had multiple internal injuries and fatty liver, contusion, lacerations, and abrasions of the left eyebrow, minimal contusion of the brain, minimal left subdural hemorrhage, contusions of thighs, contusions of eyelids. And were those the nature and extent um, of your examination of the body? Yes. All right.